I'm proud to be a nigger. <laughs> I'm proud to be a nigger. There it is. I'm proud to be a nigger. It's so simple. What about you, Vidal? You're proud to be a nigger? Will well, you release the super nigger within you? Proud to be a nigger, man. That's beautiful. And you? Freak Show, I know you're proud to be a nigger. Dan Freak Show. Come on. Name freedom would be hopeful. I'm proud to be a nigger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta take a little more pride than that. <laughs> Proud to be a nigga! <laughs> <laughs>
pretty good after it and during it. It wasn't like a problem for me. I, I don't remember at the time that there were places that I was working, um, I was just living in New Mexico. So once I got my name changed to David Fish Suit, uh, I changed it to Snap Happy Fish Suit McKilligan just because it wasn't interesting to me that my name was David Fish Suit anymore. And I, I guess I wanted a, a name that would be positive, that would bring me up and make me feel happy. I was leaving in Albuquerque, I was studying, uh, I was going to school at the time, and I wanted that name to be happy. And my friends were calling me sometimes Snap Happy, sometimes Fish, sometimes Dave or David. And um, my mom, though, didn't want to call me any of these things uh, except for David. You know, she, she was very attached to the birth name. You'll always be David to me. Um, and there was no convincing her otherwise that, that there was something else to me or that, you know, we should just you know, respect people's names, whatever they are, right? She, instead, she wanted to call me David. From his first name change in the early 2000s to the present, 2012, David has legally changed his name seven times, and each new name has exceeded its predecessor in relation to its degree of offensiveness and its place among the hierarchy of what the societal majority considers as being taboo. After David legally changed his name to Snap Happy Fish Suit McKilligan, he attempted to legally change his name to Fuck Censorship. Although David was at the time unable to legally change his name to that just mentioned, he soon thereafter went back to the same court in Bernalillo County with the request that his legal name become a variable. That is to say, his name could be anything at any time. David's request was denied. However, the judiciary of New Mexico's Supreme Court informed him that he could change his name to the word variable. So I wanted my name to to be variable. I wanted to be able to go by David when I'm with her, and by uh, X with my friends, or Fish, or Snap, or anything. And so I, I thought of the variable as a solution to this problem. Um, and I applied to change my name to variable, and they said no. Now. I had maybe applied for some other things at this time, and I applied to <laughs> change my name to fuck censorship at some point around that time, too. Um, when they said no, it kind of uh, I surprised me. I didn't know that they would say no, and I think I had conversations with my friends about how ridiculous that was. Um, I I felt amazed that the court was this way. I was I was frustrated with the courts. I did not respect their decision. I didn't like it. And it felt to me as if their justification for turning me down on variable. Um, I might have tried to get the name fuck censorship before getting the name variable. And if that was the case, then it felt like it was just revenge from the judges. Um, but but either way, I, it felt like turning me down from Snap Happy McKilligan to Variable is just stupid. It just looked like stupidity, whatever their justification for it was. Um, and so I had to go to the, the Supreme Court and I, I appealed the decision to it, and it was a whole lot more paperwork. Uh, it was additional paperwork, it was longer process. And I tried it with Fox Censorship too, but the I think to the Supreme Court in New Mexico just, I mean, they failed. I don't know what to say. It, they gave me the name Variable, but they wouldn't give me the name Fuck Censorship. And it was just their, their intellectual failing. And the United States is shamefully hypocritical about, about names. Uh, the court's reasoning 
for allowing me to get the name variable, uh, legally changing it to that, was just that it didn't really seem offensive to common decency, it didn't seem like it was a real problem. But they specifically said that it had to be the word variable, that it could not be a variable. And it was a pointless thing because, of course, they're not going to absolve me of fraud, whatever that decision is. And so it was just, it felt like they hollowed out their decision for no reason. Like they, they made it unimaginative on purpose and for nothing. And I, I, I resented that as well. I didn't like it. In 2008, David moved to Seattle, Washington, and once there, he again attempted to legally change his name to fuck censorship. In the wake of an excessively long court case, David walked away from the doors of justice with the name fuck censorship securely under his belt, and soon after, David again legally changed his name, this time to fuck the drug war. At that point, I, I, I completed my school, you know, it took years to, to get through school. I think I might have had applications in for the name Fuck Censorship at that time, but I couldn't get it. Um, and when I, I graduated, I, I said, well, fuck New Mexico. I mean, I'm, I'm tired of this place, and I don't have as many connections as I want. I had some very close friends, but um, I wasn't doing well. I didn't like the climate. I didn't like uh, my life there. And I had my degree, and I thought maybe I could get a job in, in Seattle, and maybe I could just experience life there. And so I, I moved there shortly after I graduated. Um, and this was not something my parents supported. They did not think it was a good idea. Nevertheless, uh, I moved there in 2008, and I got a job not too long afterwards. I mean, you know, I applied for a few months doing different things there, um, and I applied to get my name in as uh, Fuck Censorship. Um, and what was my reasoning behind trying to get the name changed to Fuck Censorship? Fuck Censorship. I mean, fuck it when I do it, fuck it when other people do it. Uh, it's... I think that it's it can be understood just barely, just because people are such bastards. But as we slow that down, if we can, you know, create a slightly more civilized mentality for people, um, and that that'll have to be on and offline, then we really ought to be able to censor each other and ourselves far less. Right now, when we censor each other, we miss the message that we are trying to convey to each other. And, and so the more trusting and polite you can be, the better information you can get and that you can give. Um, fuck censorship. It actually is a bad thing. And when it's uh, looked at in the proper light, you know, at its worst and at its best, the censorship does not have as much to say for it as even that, right? I'm understating my case. When the government censors people, sometimes it's murderous, sometimes it's torture, it's an evil fucking thing, it's an awful thing. And it makes hypocrites out of people because people want to pretend that they have a deeper understanding of reality and life and nature, but all too often they censor based on a word or based on like a taboo concept and that's the depth of it and it's and that's not even toe deep and I, I I just I fucking hate censorship you know um anyway so when I applied to change my name to fuck censorship though it was rejected on the lower levels and these judges were slimy about it um it rejected on the lower levels for bad reasoning when you called them on the bad reasoning what do they care discretion you know and so then you go to the upper levels and you appeal and the upper levels will overturn the lower court's decision and remand it back to the lower court. When they do that, sometimes the lower court will just say, fuck it, I don't care. I'm not comfortable with this, so I'm not doing it. And 
I think that that makes sense if you have a good head on your shoulders. But I'll be honest with you. I'm, this is, you know, a revolutionary statement. But the judges in charge of our justice system and our courts don't understand or respect the citizenry at all. They don't have a good head on their shoulders at all. They don't have sense to them. Um, and so it actually took a while to establish that changing my name to fuck censorship was free speech. And during that time, I had to spend a lot of money. I would appeal the remanded case, and I would get the same judge remanding it again. And during this time, my grandmother's ill. I lose my job, and I want to leave. I want to get the name fuck censorship and leave town. And I, I have no plans about getting involved with the N-word. I don't even have plans to get the name fuck the drug war. And my grandmother loves me. You know, when I lose my job, she's supporting me, right? And she's ill, and she's at home, and I want to go back and just be with her while she dies, right? She Essentially, since I was a teen, she raised me. Um, but a second time it gets remanded down and a second time the judge fails and he says I don't care that it's been remanded down to me I still won't do it and honestly in the courtroom at that time when I realized what was happening I looked at the window of the courtroom and I thought about jumping out now it's a plate glass window there's no way I could have jumped out and it was like a third or fourth story so if I jumped out there's no guarantee it would kill myself I, it would be able to get the job done. And that's a hard job to do. And it's, it's, it, nobody wants that job. But I hated the way they treated me. It, it crushed me. And I cried. And I hated it. And I had multiple sclerosis. And I was having an attack. It was the most miserable time of my life. And I blogged the whole time. And a lot of those blogs meant a whole lot to me. And a lot of those blogs were destroyed by Blue Sansify. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I feel bad just thinking about it, man. I fucking hate the way I've been treated online. And I hate this world, man. Um, it took me fucking years to get the name Fuck Censorship. I started in New Mexico. I spent two years in Seattle and at least a year in New Mexico. Why did the judges finally allow the name change? A judge got some sense in her. I, I, you know, filed with the petition a bunch of images of public protests. And these were images of white power assholes in the South, of anti-abortion assholes, of um, Nazi, neo-Nazis in the United States, of, um, you know, just protests on the street, things that people don't want people to protest. They don't like that political speech. They'd like it to shut up, right? They want to sell, sell this idea. Shut the fuck up about that kind of stuff. And I agree with them. I agree. That kind of political speech has no value. And yet, uh, it's po protected political speech. And I, I went to the judge and I just said, how can you say that this isn't political speech? How can you say that? How dare you say that in the face of my belief that it is political speech. Who's the politically speaking person at this time? Is it you, the judge, standing in the fucking way of it? And, you know, the judge, like, understood at some point. And, I mean, it, but it was too late, man. My grandmother was dead, so I get the name Fuck Censorship, but there's no reason to return home. My parents don't want me to return home at that time. And I don't get to spend the last weeks of her life with her. Um, and it happens... I get the name, and there's there's a dude living in my apartment. He wants to make a documentary. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be talking to Enoch, but he reminds me of you, because what half-assers the people trying to cover me have been. Um, what half-assers. And if you want to support me or cover me, you could go all the fucking way. I mean, who who besides Anon and Moose has been strong on this, man? I'm sick of these fucking, this world, this fucking species, man. I want to fucking die. I'm sick of it. It's fucking shit. In the past, in the court, people had questioned me. Why don't you just get that on a bumper sticker, that kind of thing, instead of changing your name to fuck censorship? But they didn't realize, you know, 
I, that this was an issue that was important to me and that I had something new to say about it. Not just that name freedom, that, that censorship has so many different forms and, and even failing to censor somebody that is destroying a point of view can be censorship. And that there's complexity to it, and that there's meaning to it, and that and that fighting censorship can be a calling, um, and that if censorship is bad enough, that people will turn to niggering, right? And and that I didn't say it in those terms at the time, <clears throat> but I knew that censorship niggerized people. I knew that it was a problem and a foul evil, and I I wanted to fight it. And so. Um, so, why fuck the drug war? Because fuck censorship, like I was introducing myself as fuck to people, but I wasn't feeling right. You know, I was meeting these people and I was telling them the story, but it didn't do it for me because there were the people that were like, haha, awesome, that's great. And then there were the people that were like, oh, gross. But there, was, there wasn't any meat to it. Like, when you fight censorship, it can't just be about offending people. Like, oh, I get to say fuck now. That, that can't be the depth of your political goals. So I thought fuck the drug war was more in line with really what I thought politically. That's where I, where I thought I would stay. I thought I would go back to New Mexico with the name fuck the drug war and then change my name again in New Mexico. Um, the drug war is f miserable and fuck the drug war is precisely the right message. But now I've learned that using the other terminology is, is pretty important. So mass incarceration is something that we want to decrease. Um, the drug war itself simply needs to sh change shape and fade away. Uh, so legalizing marijuana is, is past due. Um, now, I was arrested for, for drinking when I was 18 or buying beer. But I got LSD and pot and coke and all sorts of hard fucking crazy shit when I was 15. And the government didn't protect me from that. What did arresting that two, those two million people, did, did that protect me from those drugs? Hell no. No. I got those drugs easily and could have gotten more of them. And my friends at the time or who I thought were my friends. They're not, not, not my friends now, they're, they're just professionals out there in the world. But, but they got the drugs easily, right? And, I, I mean, the drug war doesn't work. It doesn't keep drugs off the street, it doesn't keep drugs away from kids. And so, it also it rests upon deep, deep ignorance. Marijuana is not nearly as bad as they say. LSD is not nearly as bad as they say. Cocaine, methamphetamines, are probably ten times worse than they say in different ways. Part of my argument um, at that time referenced Russell Lawrence Lee because I knew that he didn't get his name and you know I was writing I was just typing and my court documents are like like um they're written by fucking James Joyce you know these these are court documents that have no legalese in them uh, and you know it's just as it came out and I was typing and I was like and why shouldn't Russell Lawrence Lee have gotten his name I just asked that in the court document because why the fuck not like what what did these judges ever do for Russell Lawrence Lee? Around the year 2005, David began researching archived court cases which involved claimants who desired to legally change their name so that it may bear a word or words which most would consider as being bizarre or inappropriate for employment within an individual's legal name. Through this research effort, David discovered the court case of Lee v. Ventura County. In the late 1980s, Russell Lawrence Lee petitioned the court of Ventura County, California in order to legally change his name to Radical Adid Supernigger. Lee was an African-American 
a retired school teacher and a senior citizen at the time of his first petitioning. Although Lee's first request was denied, he returned to the same court some months later, this time requesting that his legal name be changed to Mr. Nigger. Mr. being spelled M-I-S-T-E-R, open parentheses I, closed parentheses. Lee explicitly stated that the second I was silent. Lee's secondary request was also denied, but he appealed the judiciary's decision and took his case to the Supreme Court of California. However, despite his prolonged efforts, Lee was ultimately denied his desired name and presumably died with the name Russell Lawrence Lee. So 2004, I think, was when I found out about Russell Lawrence Lee, or five, or six, but it was when I was researching getting the name Fuck Censorship and still in New Mexico. So I had a while to percolate on him. When I first out, found out about Lee versus Ventura County in California, where he, where he lived, um, <clears throat> I thought that it was a peculiar case and I withheld my judgment. And I was testing out ideas about perfect name freedom, that every person should control their name. But this was a very interesting case and challenging case. And I did dig deeper. I looked at other internet commentaries, including, ultimately, a Stormfront commentary that struck me in a very difficult way. Um, Stormfront is a, a, a racist website, uh, a negrophobic website. And on it, they talked about Russell Lawrence Lee's case and him not getting the name. And one commentator said, let him, and then made a grin face using a capital D. And it was the first time I saw the grin face, and I was conflicted. I was like, this is, because understand... That's, there's some hideousness to that. What are you saying, let him? Let him, because if he gets the name Mr. Nigger, then it justifies you and your f bullshit? And that's how I felt when I encountered it. I was like, we should let him, but not for the reasons that are going to make you happy, you, f you piece of shit, is how I felt. And I looked at it and I was like, man, I'm, I might have even made a video at the time just talking about, like, because I never grew up to be a fan of racism. I never, you know, I never used the N-word in that old sense. Um, and I just, I don't respect that, that way of life, that way of thinking about black people and that way of thinking about American history. I just, I don't think that's good. And, I, and it's not that... It's not a reality for a lot of people. So, so it's a real problem in my mind. And I, I hated that dude. But then I thought, at the same time, here I am and I essentially, policy-wise, agree with him. The, the judges did something wrong to him. But then agreeing with him made me feel really conflicted. I, I hated that dude. So, I get the name Fuck the Drug War as planned. And at this point, they are just reading out the letters. And I think about name freedom in a new light, because I'm going to go to New Mexico, and who knows what they'll do there. I think about name power, and power being the only freedom that you can have. <laughs> now look, I mean, I was still a naive, spoiled, an ideologue, a, you know, a liberal, but somebody that thought, believed in the goodness of humanity, and that wasn't aware of Danger Man 5, you know? And... So I, I'm there and I decide, you know, well, what do you want to do? And so I'm there. My name's Fuck the Drug War. I'm flirting online. And I flirt with this, this sweetheart, this cutie from across the coast from me. Her name is Bonnie Jolie Seven, I think. It was it Seven? Who knows her username because she tossed me aside at the end of our relationship. But I'm looking at her and I'm like, wow, I... I'll hop ship. I'll go and visit her if I can. And she's she's scrappy, right? She's got, you know, 
she's got a lot of attitude and when I when I talk to her I float the idea what do you think people would say if I asked somebody else to change their name in honor of Russell Lawrence Lee look at this case where, where something went wrong and I've been asking other people to change their name to fuck censorship if they oppose censorship and and fuck the drug war if they oppose the drug war right but um, they don't they don't oppose censorship they don't oppose the drug war that strongly and so the people like only when provoked you, you know you know if it comes down to it you, you talk the talk but then if if somebody else is making a larger investment than you then you hit the road you're gone and and nobody would do it you know I asked on assumption I asked a lot of people online why don't we make this a movement you know it's time that we had some some progress in this shit society man I hate this fucking world man it's so cruel and and it's like and it it just seemed to me that name freedom was a great place to start because everybody could do what they wanted with it and that fuck was a great word to say fuck the courts with you know and fuck fuck the cops if you want to whatever it is um, and people are on board and so I'm feeling high I'm feeling good and I talked to her about Russell Lawrence Lee's case and she kinda gets me but then she says no nobody will go for it there's no no value to it and I kept asking like well why like why wouldn't a young black man look up to Russell Lawrence Lee and and Richard Pryor and and kinda of feel him and understand him why why wouldn't they want this n-word fixed and why wouldn't they want name freedom and isn't this the same as getting the name fuck censorship and all of these points you know all of them seem like legitimate points and relevant and so I make a, a video asking African Americans would you please um, come out and and change your name in honor of this guy is there anybody out there that is strong enough to do this that has the the wherewithal the fortitude and the answer was no not one positive response the answer was fuck you no the answer was you're a racist for asking now not initially initially I think the people like hit it and like it gave the objections that people give and it's always the same objections with niggerphobia like what about this what about that what about that and I didn't know what niggerphobia was at the time I just you know just asking it are there African Americans that feel like this would be something that would be a good thing to do anyone out there so the answer gets to be no but then I'm not used to taking no for an answer because I have white privilege all right there it is right I'm spoiled I've got a spoiled upbringing I can't even handle that they won't fucking make a name tag the way they would for anyone for you for anyone they'll make your name tag but they won't make one that says fuck censorship why I changed my name to Mr. Radical, fuck censorship, super nigger, nigger. Four of the five names that Russell Lawrence Lee had chosen, but could not achieve. After David again legally changed his name, this time in honor of Russell Lawrence Lee, he began a prolonged contemplation of the word nigger, and simultaneously an investigation into the history of the word's usage. Through such reflection and research, David began to self-identify as a nigger himself in spite of his ethnicity. He also conceived the idea of redefining the word nigger so that its primary definition would simply be human, thus making it applicable to all people, regardless of their ethnicity, geography, or class. Subsequently, David has created a miniature lexicon, the root of which is the word nigger. It should be added that David also employs the word nigger as a verb, and his definition of such is humanize. In his words, David is niggering nigger. 
if nigger is the root of David's lexicon, then negaritarianism is definitely the fruit. Negaritarianism is a word which David has coined, and its definition is, quote, advocacy for niggers, which in this context simply means advocacy for humans, or more specifically, advocacy for the oppressed. After David established and further organized his philosophy, Negaritarianism, he began interviewing people on the streets of Albuquerque, telling them his story of what he calls name freedom, expressing his hope to redefine the word nigger, and asking for their opinion of the basic tenets which comprise Negaritarianism. David is indiscriminate in relation to his interviewees. He has conversed with people of all ethnicities, nationalities, occupations, classes, and age groups. Equally, he has elicited a plethora of distinct reactions, commentaries, and opinions from them. As of 2012, David continues to conduct these interviews. Uh, I changed my name in, in Seattle, Washington. Let me just tell you this so that I can see if you'll, you'll warm up to me. I changed it to fuck censorship legally. <laughs> <laughs> and then I changed it to fuck the drug war. So that was my legal name right there. Here. Okay. Um, wow. You want to just take it and, and... So fuck the drug war was my legal name. Mm -hmm. I was out there fighting for name freedom so that you could control your own name. Mm -hmm. um, I found out about this guy in California. His name was Russell Lawrence Lee. And he was trying to change his name to Radical Adid. Take a breather with me here. Radical Adid Super Nigger. <laughs> and they said no. So he went back trying to get the name Mr. Nigger. And they said no. And this is a black man being denied his rights, you know? So. When they said no, he appealed, right? He appealed, and he tried to get the name again at the Superior Court. Should he have gotten his name? Do you think he should have gotten his name? Uh, well, yeah, if that's what he wanted his name to be, who cares? There it is, name, name freedom. Do you agree? <laughs> well, so I changed my name in honor of him to the name he chose, right? Uh-huh. So I changed it to Mr. Nigger, right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I changed my name in honor of a black man that didn't get his name. What the fuck you honor of a black man? Uh, Russell Lawrence Lee. You ever heard of him? Who? Russell Lawrence Lee? I've heard of him before, so go ahead. Cheers. So, so when I changed it to Mr. Nigger, I realized white people what? don't like that word. You know? Well, white people don't like it. But black people don't always like it either, right? It, so we censor it. That's the solution, censoring it, right? Record the If I can. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. <laughs> So, so I'm, I guess I'm out here trying to nigger the N-word. I'm trying to make it mean human. My name's David, nigger means human, super nigger. And I, I want to just, uh, my name's David, nigger means human, super nigger. And I, I want that word to mean human. Like, I'm, so my name is David, nigger means human, super nigger. I'm trying to fix the N-word. Well, you got a video camera right over here? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I wish I... Somebody was working with me, but it's just me solo. It's just a small thing. But I see what you got here. It's like uh, Rob Zombie, you know, resurrected from hell. It's, <laughs> it's excellence. Did you do these? Yeah. And you do other tattoos. Um, I never learned to to tattoo, but I imagine well, with the no. tattoo gun you could do I it pretty easy. I didn't tattoo. Oh yeah, but... I had somebody else do my work. Yeah, well me too, right? All of my tattoos are done yeah. by other people. Yeah. But it's my work. Excellent. Nobody else has it. Cool. I have other ones too, but nobody else has it. They're unique. Yeah. I like that about life, that everybody's unique, but we all have these huge similarities too, you know, these, these themes. Right. Uh, what are you drinking? Uh, right now, uh, just uh, brisk iced tea. All right, good morning. Yeah. Let me tell you my story real quick and see what you think about it. Um, why I do these interviews is because I, I changed my name in New Mexico, and I changed it to the word variable so I could get any name in the universe. 
And when they said no, I went to the Supreme Court and they said I could just get the name variable. So V A R I A B L E. Right. I couldn't be Jim one day and then Tom the next. So you jump from any any country as a variable. Right. Well, the idea would be worldwide. My name would be the variable. I would be a house. Next day I would be a parakeet. Next day I would be a set of glasses. Next day I would be uh, a sculpture. You know. Right. right. Yeah. I got you. I got you. That would be fun. But they they said no, so I changed my name to fuck censorship and then to fuck the drug war. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pleasure to meet you, man. Hey, I like hey. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you're still filming me over well, here. Well, the reason is because of what came next. Um, I changed my name to Fuck War and I got that name. Right. Uh, but that's an offensive name for, I'd say, probably 70% of the populace. I don't know. How did would you, you know? know? Did right? you get the tattoo on the camera? Yeah, I, I did. With, right. You know, I've got one too right there, so I felt like we I had something. I see you're kind of wore out there. Yeah, I am wore out. <laughs> cause I, I, I wash my hands so much. I see you up above and shit. Man, I'm just worn out all told, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with. But, well, this is why. Getting the name Fuck was easy, and being Fuck War was easy. But I found out about a black guy that couldn't get the N-word in his name. And he tried and he failed. He tried to get the name Radical Adid Super Nigger. And they said no. Super Nigger. Yeah. <laughs> and then he tried to get the name Mr. Nigger and they said no, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, what do you, why do you think they said no? So, it, it should have been white, white supremacist nigger Master Joe. <laughs> Well, I don't know. He was black. So, for him, what do you think it should have been? He could have threw it off like that. Oh, yes. It throw, it's, mix, it up, said, mix it up. He could have said white in there because they're part white. Because everybody's been spanking their asses. <laughs> <laughs> so, this was my college ID out there. Studying psychology. Variable, variable. All right, Mr. X. How about that? All right. I went to the Supreme Court to get that. Very cool. So what was your name before? Snap Happy Fish Suit McKilligan. <laughs> Snap Happy Fish Suit McKilligan. But I was born David Hughes. That's okay. probably what you're asking, okay, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's what came after that I did interviews about. It's really nice to meet you. I mean, what do you do? Um, I'm a surgical technologist, but I bartend here on the weekends. And surgical technologists do not do anesthesiology. No. But they do, I mean, they're not surgeons. No, they're not surgeons. I'm a surgeon's right-hand man, woman. All right. Yeah. You're like scalpel, and you're like, it's already in the brain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I'm respecting that while I'm telling you mm -hmm. that I got the name Fuck Censorship next and then Fuck the Drug War in short succession. Fuck the drug war. Wow. Uh, it took years. How, so how much does it actually take you, like how much money does it take, cost you? 125, maybe a little more. To change your name, that's it? Well, but if they tell you no, you have to appeal. And that's what happened to this Russell Lawrence Lee guy. He's trying to get the name Radical Adid Supernigger. He's a black man in California, trying to fix the N-word. He's a senior citizen, a school teacher. Uh-huh. And the justices, guess what? Tell him no. Um, so I didn't like that because that seemed really weird to me. But he goes back, you know, uh -huh. he's willing to take a little more. Mr. Nigger was the next name he asked for. And they said no again, and he appealed. Should he have gotten his name? Absolutely, why not? Okay. Can't let black people have their names. Who knows what they want next? Whatever. Exactly. <laughs> nice eye roll. Come that. on. All right. I mean, it's, it's just a word, really. If you're offended by that, then maybe that's... There's something wrong with you. Now, if that's... You can identify, if you identify yourself with, if you call me a cracker, if you call a nigger a nigger, if you call uh, a spick, whatever it is, if you identify yourself with that racial slur and that... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? That put down... Yeah. then there's something wrong with you. Then you don't have enough self-confidence or you feel that there's something, you're embarrassed of something. Now, what if you don't even identify as it and you just think, you know, I don't want them to say it. I don't want to ever hear that one. 
So like, I don't ever want to have a lot of things. I don't want to ever have to go to work, and I don't ever, you know, want to have to pay taxes. But it. I mean, it is life. You yeah, know? I hear you. You don't always get what you want. And somehow I got what I wanted there, Mr. Nigger. Mr. Nigger. Got his Nigger. name for him. <laughs> I All love right. it. That Thank is you, great. Sweetheart. All right. So oh my name my gosh. now is David. Nigger means human. Super Nigger. And uh, it means human now because I say so. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I think that you're amazing and I love it. I love it. I do. Cheers. I nice do. I love you. it. That's awesome. Go, good for you. I changed my name to variable in New Mexico. This is my school ID. They said no. The court said no. Judge did, right? But I got it after about a year. And I... That was my school ID, like I said, but them saying no made me think maybe I'll change my name to fuck censorship and then to fuck the drug war. Fuck the drug war. We need to end the drug war soon. Uh, and, and I believed in that fuck war completely, and fuck censorship was my name before that. But there was a man in California, his name was Russell Lawrence Lee, and he didn't get his own name. Uh, he had tried to change his name to Radical Adid Supernigger. He's an African American and a school teacher, retired. And when he was 63, he tried to get the name Mr. Nigger and appealed it and really fought for his own name. Walkie talking. All right, man. Do you think he should have gotten his name? Uh, I don't think that I have the complete story. I don't know exactly what he was going for or why he was going for it. He was trying to take the explosive content and the racial slur out of the word nigger. I, I think it's a lot more than just doing that, though. I mean, that, that word has such a deep root in history that you can't just, by doing one simple action, like changing any of that, to make any sort of like leverage. I think and that also, he wanted to have a platform yeah, to speak to that, though. Yeah, but also, the, that, the meaning of that word to different people is to be completely different. So even his action of doing that will be extremely offensive to other people Possibly, because their yeah. perspective is different. And so like, even though his intentions will be good, in the end, it can still be problematic. Now, let me ask you that because I changed my name to Fuck War, and that could be very offensive to many people. Do you support me changing my name to Fuck the drug war. I mean, I don't think it was my decision, it was yours. So yeah, yeah, but you if you were the judge, because I had to fight the judges for it. Judge. Yeah, I'm not, saying, like, uh, come on, imagine, I right? Imagine. Come on. You, you, you can imagine. You made a decision. It, it, all right, it fair enough. It doesn't affect my life whatsoever. So then why not let it happen, right? Yeah. That, name freedom. And so Russell Lawrence Lee should have gotten that name, man, because the fact that he didn't meant that I had to change my name in honor of him, you know? I suppose, so it wouldn't I think, be forgotten. I think the word fucking war have a much different history than the word that he was trying to say. I agree with that. I put nigger in the classification as a slur, right? Uh, like faggot or cunt or honky. There you go. Right. But and those... The whole, the whole spectrum. Well, that's not the whole spectrum, I'm sure. We, we left out, right, yeah, retards and the rest, it. right? People are watching it might be offended. I prefer if you didn't go for it. Well, so now let me tell you why. They're offended because the words are uncomfortable for us because we don't use them, no, right? they're offended because language has meaning. Language has meaning to a lot of different people, and you can't control that meaning because that meaning is put into place by society. In that case, listen to my meaning. Uh, I changed my name in honor of this black man to David Nigger Means Human, Super Nigger. And uh, now that word does mean human. Negaritarianism is advocacy for real people, and we need a nigger rights struggle. And you're the one who's going to start that? No, I didn't say that. No, I mean, you're asking me that, or what? That's what you're saying. No, I'm saying saying that we should. Yeah, we should. I said we. It was very intentional. Well, I think that... um, there's a time and place for people to do that. I don't think you personally have any place to be the person doing that. I think that's actually extremely offensive. Because of my skin color. And I find that extremely offensive, right? So it's not, it's an arbitrary standard. Offensiveness is an arbitrary standard upon which to act. You, you can you know? say that, but it's still grounded within a long history and it's true, right? Our, our long history of arbitrary offensiveness. I hear you, but I'm saying but you can say this is not an arbitrary stuff. movement. You know, this you, is you against censorship. You can say that racism is arbitrary, but you cannot say it did not affect people. And I, can, and I can tell you that specifically as truth. It has affected many people. But it does affect people. It was arbitrary, and all we have to do is say, no, this doesn't mean anything. Doesn't Wait, no, 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 no. I'm that saying that... No, I'm saying... Okay. Oh, I'm it's all right. Away. No, it's okay. nice to talk to you, man. The interview just shown was conducted in Mellon Green Park, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I wish to add the following. Shortly after David began interviewing participants of the Occupy Pittsburgh protest, which was based in Mellon Green Park, he was effectively banned from the park 
due to his own socio-political views which were obviously perceived by the participants of the Occupy Pittsburgh protest as being either too radical or offensive to be included in the protest. However, in spite of the protesters' wishes, David continued conducting interviews within Mellon Green Park. In his own words, David declared that he was occupying Occupy Pittsburgh. Do it! <laughs> yes! Nicely done! I thought it would be an interesting one. I didn't know if you had a minute. Um, I changed my name to Variable out in New Mexico. Oh, wow. And uh, they said no initially, so I went to the Supreme Court of New Mexico. I really fought for it. Right? Okay. But then I tried to get the name Fuck Censorship and then Fuck the Drug War. Huh. I, and out in Seattle, Washington, I got it after a few years of effort. Right? Um, and so show him so he can believe it. My name was legally Fuck War. My middle name was The Drug. And yeah, I was working politics. <laughs> Uh, I found out about him, black man in California, and he's trying to change his name to Radical Adid, Super Nigger. And it was kind of out of my element, it was extreme. Yeah. They said no, so he tried to get the name Mr. Nigger, and they said no again. Um, so he appealed, and I, I know that process. When they say no, you can appeal to the superior courts, and if the superior court says yes, you get the name, if the superior court says no, you don't. And so I had gone through that process and uh, won my name, but he couldn't win his name. Do you think that he should have? I think, I think he could get the name. I mean, yeah, I so think. would you be comfortable calling him it if he uh, was introduced himself, said, Hi, I'm Mr. Nigger. And As a white guy, I'd be like, <laughs> I just be there. I'd be like, I'd probably just call him Mr. Okay. You just call him Mr. Oh, oh, this is your class. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Well, so I changed my name in honor of him. Now nigger means human. I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. Wow, that's, that's awesome. Okay, so... I can't so, believe you got that word. So nigger means human, that's all of us. Yeah. Right? It took me a while, too, but, you know, it means a lot. Yeah. Thanks. See ya. So I, I changed my name in honor of him. What? <laughs> Did they allow you to really they do that? They let me, but I, like you Why? said, a white guy, and I had this tattoo at the time, I had all these things going on. I, I didn't, I'm, I'm not bigoted. No, 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 no. But you, my name was Fuck War, yeah, and I realized that this guy couldn't get the name Mr. You're Nigger, I'll get it. Four. Yeah, why not? Yeah, you're yeah. right. But then, like, I realized, what the hell, I'm, now I'm a nigger. Okay. You know, <laughs> right? that's, that's what it is. Ah, I like that. <laughs> all right. Thank I like you. that, man. Hey, that's it. I like it. Pleasure. All right. I'll see you guys. This new paradigm is one where we reject uh, bigotry. And so I'm trying to do my best to do it. Am I? Uh, am I bothering you? Yeah, if you're, uh, if if you're, I, if you're insulting people out here I'm on not, camera. I'm not. Huh? I'm not. I'm not insulting people on camera. Okay. I just I want to talk to you over here. Okay. Hey, right what's up? Oh, okay. Around Going around the corner. Excuse me. Right here. Right here. You got any ID on it? Yeah, I got my ID. Here's my ID. I'm from New Mexico. Can I ask you what you're doing? I, so, I was just on the street. I was on the sidewalk. I thought it was public property. I'm not doing anything. Well, what are you what, what are you doing if you don't mind me asking? What do you mean put me am I under arrest? No, you're being questioned. You're being detained. Okay. Relax. You want to record, that's fine. I, I don't feel comfortable that's and fine. so you're allowed okay. to record. I'm allowed to record. I, absolutely, but I don't want it in his face. Okay, I'm not trying to put it in your face. And I don't okay. want you uh, verbally uh, insulting people. And I was not verbally insulting people. I changed it to fuck censorship. And then I changed it to fuck the drug war in Seattle. Um, and uh, there's this dude in California trying to change his name to Radical Adid Supernegger. And I asked people if he should have gotten that name or not. He was a black guy. 
I, when they said no, he tried to get the name Mr. Nigger, and so he fought back, you know? Oh, yeah. Would you have given him that name if you were the judge? Hell no. You wouldn't have given him his name. But I got the name Fuck, why not? Uh, is this the nigga right. telling you about the dude with the name Mr. Nigger or some shit? Yeah, Man, Russell Lee. He's against it, he's against it. survive all of these n-words. No one will outlive these nigger words. No one will survive all of my n-words. I'll watch as you all die, the nigger apocalypse. And as the tears stream down, your face is absurd. And as you cry, well, my condolences, I reveal the hurt within the word. It's nigger getting now. The pain is ours. Like hammers from the sky. An evil N word. It strikes us in the eye and puts it out. And no one will survive the nigger get on. Alas, no one will survive the final and bomb and bomb and bomb. Call your mom. No one lives. No one lives or gives a damn. You dominate the scene with innate obscene obscenities like nigga, 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 nigga. Oh my God, I can't survive the n-word oh my god there's no hope for society all of my niceties depend upon niggerphobia how are we to survive this reign of hen like a volcano from below, 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 you vomit forth the N. And the lava flows, it flows, it flows, and it flows again. And all these niggers, they sting our feet, our knees, our elbows. My God, we crawl. We crawl away from the end slur, the end slur, to escape the pain. Oh, no one will survive the end word. How could a black survive the N-word? How could a white survive the rudeness, the crudeness, the N-word? Nigger will not let you survive its cruel sting. <laughs> So true. <laughs> Wait, there's hope. There's hope. 
A cowboy man from Venus, the other planet between us and the sun, it shines so bright inside the cowboy man, his penis, it shines so bright as well. What's he doing over there? He's taken an end bear and struck it with a nigger ring. You never thought the snickering would end. No, 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 no. He's niggering the end. Oh my god! Oh my god! Gather the troops! I hope he poops out all the end pain that we have suffered from. I know that he scoops all of his own poops and puts them away in toilets that don't toil like us. Oh my god, the nigger word is slowly getting better. Oh my god. And, oh my god, the N-word is getting better, 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 You bet your socks, yeah. Niggering will solve the N-word problem, we'll resolve it. That'll be the end. Niggering will solve the problem, I resolve to do my best, my friend. And if it is so, that niggering so cures our problem, then we rob them of another word they can hurt us with till we hear the word dog fucker. Oh my god, and so what are we gonna do? We'll nigger the whole damn zoo. All of the racial slurs, all of the little curs, all of the things they're pure, all of the little things that stir around like a pot, an end stew. I don't know what we've got here yet, but I always thought I would get to nigger faggot, I don't think that we do that now. Instead, we just have to take it a step at a time. Oh, saying nigger's not a crime. It's what we are all of the time. You and me, your sister too, we're all free to be. One happy niggerity. Oh, oh. In 2011, David again legally changed his name, this time to David Nigger Means Human Super Nigger, and soon after his seventh name change, David moved to Bethel, Alaska, with the hope of being able to yet again legally change his name while there to nigger means human, which means nigger. It should be added that David's reasoning for changing his name so frequently is that after he successfully changed his name to Mr. Radical, Fuck Censorship, Super Nigger, Nigger, he established a goal to legally change his name so that some portion would include the word nigger in all 50 states. As of 2012, said goal remains tentative. David lived in Alaska for only a couple of months and then again relocated, this time to Baltimore, Maryland. David lived in Baltimore for an even shorter length of time, and after being hastily evicted from his temporary residence, he moved in with Pittsburgh native Gary Guy Matthews. Gary is a fellow name freedom advocate, and in recent years he has continually attempted to legally change his name to Boomer the Dog. His reasoning being that the majority of his associates and friends have always known and referred to him as Boomer, but additionally, and more importantly, he self-identifies with the canine protagonist from the past television show, Here's Boomer, which was broadcast by NBC from December of 1979 
to August of 1982. Like magic, he appears A hero to save the day And just when you think he's here for good That's when he goes away Cause he's a boomer He's never gonna settle down Wandering from town to town No ordinary man's best friend And when he comes into your life He'll never be the same They don't understand he's more dog than man, and they worry about his being a furry, or so it seems. I speak of Gary Guy Matthews, seen here, weirdly, who wanted to legally change his name to Boomer the Dog, and sadly was denied. The peculiar Pittsburgher says he filed for the name change because he's a fan of the 1980s NBC series, Here's Boomer, remember that one? Oh, oh it's awesome and often dresses as the dog at furry conventions and parties. I thought I recognized him. Mm. <laughs> anyway, a judge rejected the request, noting that if Matthews, who's 44, as if that matters, were to witness a serious vehicle crash and call for help, the name could confuse an emergency dispatcher. Wrote the judge, it's not a stretch to imagine the dispatcher concluding that the call is a prank and refusing to send an emergency medical response. For more, we go to someone who has no choice when it comes to wearing fur. Oh. <laughs> that guy is so true to his craft. Wait, Shale Crow is a furry? <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. That's, you know, that's why, what's his face? I gotta go to these meetings. Yeah. Joe, okay, the reason, to me, the reason the judge gives makes sense. It's like why Gwyneth Paltrow's kid, Apple, is going to just get nowhere when she calls 911 and they say, Who are you? You're going to Apple. Yeah. They're going to hang up on her. Uh, I hope she doesn't have to call 911. Back to the question, Greg. Okay, I will. Uh, what do you make of this, Joe? Is the judge right? I was, I, you know, I was very torn. I was very torn. Half of me was going, You know, thank God a judge is stepping in yeah. and telling a moron he's not allowed to be a moron. But on the other hand, I said, Why doesn't the judge just let this guy go? So if this guy ever is in cardiac arrest and he calls 911 mm -hmm. and they think it's a prank, well, we got rid of another moron. That's Good. true. That's true. You know? Yeah. I, I don't know how to Darwinian feel. In that yeah. yeah. I've always said you're extremely Darwinian. I, I know. You have. Yeah, you yeah, told yeah, me that yeah. a lot. I have. Usually <laughs> over drinks. Wait a second. I don't smoke. I'm lucky that was a trick cigar. Boomer the dog out in the middle of the woods right now. And they can hear the wind in the trees on a nice fall day, the day before Halloween. And I just uh, got back yesterday from the final sections of the appeal, getting it into the court. So hopefully we're going to do well, and the judges are going to have to get back to me on whether I can get the name Boomer the Dog or not. So we'll see. I mean, it is my name. It's always been my name for many years. I believe in the spirit of what Here's Boomer was all about. The t you know, the TV show. I mean, I loved that show. See, I didn't see every episode of Here's Boomer, but the show went off the air. And then after that, I kind of was, I was like sad. Because I really liked the dog and I liked the show. And I thought, well... What am I going to do? What, how do I keep this spirit alive? Because it's so good to me. Just at this, this right time in my life. How do I keep this going? And I thought, well, you know, I could be like Boomer the dog. Like Boomer from the TV show. Now, they never called him actually Boomer the dog. That was not his real name. His real name, offstage, was Johnny. 
and they had an issue with uh, the Tonight Show. They were going to call the show Here's Johnny, apparently, according to Wiki. And they had to uh, change it because his name, you know, would have conflicted with Johnny Carson that was on at the time. That was a late night talk show like Jay Leto or... So what they did was uh, they named, they changed his name to Boomer. And I saw on Wiki that the name Boomer or the word Boomer applying to a dog means a male dog. One of those things it also means a kangaroo too in Australia. A submarine, or just a loud noise, like we heard before, you know. <laughs> that thing really, that thing really took off. I'm just lucky I got out of the way of the trick cigar. I would have been a boomer. So anyway, I got, uh, I was just influenced by that wonderful show. I thought it was great. Took the name Boomer, started using it. Friends called me Boomer. Then everybody I'd meet, I'd bark, well, hey, I'm Boomer. So I'm just going to, you know, use that name. And I, they, they started calling me Boomer. It felt good to be called Boomer. So I just kept up with the name for a long time. And, and it became me. I actually have thought of changing my name for... A bunch of years I thought wow wouldn't it be neat if I could change my name to Boomer my dad changed his name he got a more Americanized name which was a trend back in the 20th earlier 20th century because people you know discriminated against Italians and other ethnic uh, types so he Americanized his name so I don't really have a connection with a family ancestry or anything that goes way back, only to my parents. So with that, I thought, well, it'd be neat to change my name. What could I be? I had different ideas because before, I was named Pongo, which is another dog from a movie. I called myself Pongo, and I enjoyed it. But Boomer was more me, so I kept that name. It's right outside your window. It's the letters and colors, the Triceratops. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah, that's good. Um, so what do you study? Accounting. Account uh, yeah. Do you think that you got into accounting because there's money in the field? Mm, or because sort of your... Like yeah. The job market. The job, job market. Yeah. Do you believe that you are a nigger at all? My name's David. Uh, N means human. Uh, my name's David. N means human. Uh, and then super. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, is that? Yeah, yeah, that's real. What? So N means human. N M H. Are you, you open to that idea? <laughs> that is awesome, dude. All right. Cheers. How'd you uh, get that? I uh, well, you know, I got it out in Seattle where they you have name freedom, but this is me in New Mexico. That is awesome. How long have you been here? I've been here like a year. Well, like, do you go to school here? No. Mostly I work on just fixing the N-word. I'm humanizing it every day, telling people that it means human, we can fight for N-word rights. <laughs> you think it's realistic, it'll happen. <laughs> Dude. So, like where, like, where are you at usually, like, in Oakland? I go uh, downtown, sometimes up in Oakland, more often to the hills. District. That is awesome. Uh, I, I'm, I'm out in Green Tree. I'm 
west side I've been there once, but not really so, uh, much time in these different areas. I gotta get your help so sure. Like cool Alright, yeah, alright. Give it a call. Oh shit, that is funny as hell. I've been hit by a, a rogue ball. I don't know about seeing it. There's a hospital over here, right? The UNM yeah, hospital? Yeah, there's a hospital. We'll take you there, man. So, that really hurt, man. That was tough on me. Oh, uh, good shot. I think, well, it wasn't me, man. Oh, God. So, my last name is Nigger. Will you say I'm proud to be a nigger? <laughs> right now, it would make no. me feel better. I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to say that, bro. Will you say release the super nigger in you? You've just been injured? Nope. Sorry, oh, man. Oh, God. Well, I can walk to the hospital on my own, bro. You sure you're going to make it, man? Yeah, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, uh, thank you, I'm, man. I'm a lifeguard, bro. And no, but can lifeguards you. can't be niggerphobic. It's my last name, man. All right, bro. Yeah. I mean... Niggerity. Will you share niggerity with me? I'm bleeding from the eye. Mm, sorry, dude. I... Yeah, you got to get out of here, man. Peace, bro. All right? Yeah. Okay, man. All right, take care. Oh, God. Oh, God, this is the worst thing that's happened recently. This hurt an incredible amount. I want to point out that I did not get it on camera. And I should have, you know... Oh, God. I just yelled, ow, and fell on the ground. It was the worst thing ever. Oh, God. Graffiti to me is the only interesting thing about it most places. Um, I because I read them when I can. I can't read that. Maybe it says sakes or something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I um, but I read them, and when they say nothing, it doesn't interest me. Um, but when it says something that I get right away then I enjoy it. And most of it, I don't. Um, I don't get it. Uh, that kind of thing is kind of directional. That's a T duet. Um, and, and this over here is a duet, you know? Uh, this is mean. Anyway, um, most of what we do in life doesn't amount to much more than graffiti. The world doesn't care. The world isn't going to be there for us later. Uh, this graffiti is on chain link fence right there. You can see it now, can't you? And who cares that it's there? And to care takes time and is pointless because the graffiti artist is gone. Other people think that they can manage their public image so that they'll come out of this life and they'll die and they'll smell like roses. That's the shit you get from Catholic universities. That's not reality. Whatever you do, you're going to come out of this smelling like a corpse. Whatever you do. And so you might as well work hard and get your hands dirty and try and do something good. Soon after David moved into Boomer's residence in Pittsburgh, he received a letter from the Judiciary of Bethel, Alaska, informing him that his requested name change had been denied. Most ironically, in said letter, the judiciary cited the case involving Russell Lawrence Lee and the judiciary of Ventura County, California, and David's past case, which involved the judiciary of Washington Supreme Court, in defense of their decision not realizing that David was variable and that his then name was as such in honor of Russell Lawrence Lee.
regardless of whether or not you agree with his philosophy, his ideals, or even his asserted level of sanity, one is likely to admit that David is an epitome of fuck censorship. He is apparently willing to sacrifice his personal reputation in order to contribute to the achievement of transpersonal goals. This being in great contrast to a new generation of narcissistic young adults operating under the principle of business as usual, or those who are now commonly referred to as hipsters, that is, a young person characterized by an adherence to anal intellectual reductionism, worship of the self, and a refusal to exhibit any emotions other than apathy or cynicism. The exploits of David, nigger means human, super nigger, and those similar to him, represent newly radicalized methods and expressions of freedom in the Western world. When juxtaposed with those who compose much of contemporary underground culture in America, David exposes the rebellious middle-class trendy as being nothing but a perpetually hedonistic moron who only dabbles in what are now cliché and or nullified methods of socio-political revolt. Other than David, I am not aware at this time of any other individual willing to change their legal name so that it will include not only a racial slur, but that racial slur which is arguably the most offensive word of the English lexicon. Despite being a privileged member of First World Society, David has, through his interviews and other personal media, attempted to show those who care to watch and listen that regardless of ethnicity, gender, class, or social standing, all of humanity is oppressed by nature in some form, that the only way to transcend our organic oppression is to remain in cooperation with all mankind, and that such facts reveal the most true and actual definition of a word like nigger. In conclusion, David's message is that the word nigger has always and will forever mean human. One, two, three, I'm proud, proud to, be to be a nigger. nigger. Thank you. So, so you think you could tell Heaven from hell Blue skies from pain Can you tell a green field From a cold steel rail A smile from a veil Do you think you can tell? Did they get you to trade? Occupy my whole, occupy my whole, all the 
Lord knows my knees are bent. Outside your tent, outside your tent. I'm begging you, please. My knees outside your tent, outside your tent, and my knees are bent. Occupy me, occupy me, please. Occupy me, I'm on my knees. Occupy my home, I'm a home, I'm a home, oh Lord knows. Okay. What are you doing with a thing? That was great. <laughs>